Welcome to this video on how do I set up the job queue in Microsoft Dynamics Nav 2013 R2. I'm Waldo, I'm a Microsoft Dynamics Nav MVP and I'm creating this video in collaboration with Platan. At the end of this video, you should know the basics on how to set up the job queue in Dynamics Nav. Which means the objective of this video is first of all getting to know the job queue and how to run jobs on a recurring basis. And we do all this in four steps. Let's first explain about the basics. What are job queues? What are the job queue entries? And how do categories come into play? Now, to go to the job queue functionality, we go to the departments, to the administration, to application setup, and there we can find the job queue. Now, the highest level in the job queue functionality is the job queue itself. A job queue can be seen as a collection of jobs that has to be run in the background. And these jobs can be either recurring or a one-time thing. If the job queue is not running, the job queue entries will not be running either. As you can see, I've got two job queues, a default and a posting, and neither of these are started. So none of the job queue entries, none of the code units that are scheduled will be running at this moment. To start a job queue, we will see that later on, but I can just uh, start the job queue manually or doing it with a NAS. And I set it up here. Like if I want the default job queue to be started from NAS, I just enable it here. Now, as I said, it is a collection. Now, do I define the collection? I do that with the category filter. Like this job queue will run all job queue entries with the category empty. And this will run all categories, perch post or sales post. Now, where do I set up the categories? You can find it here. And as you can see, I've got two, which are quite default. You can find these or you need these when you want to set up the background posting in on sales and purchase side. Now, the lowest level is the job queue entries. This is the level where we set up the code units or reports that we like to schedule. And in this case, I've got two default code units that's, uh, that are scheduled, the process service email queue and the service order um, check response time. These are scheduled in a recurring matter. So these are going to run recurringly, which actually means it runs when it has to run and it's, it's going to schedule the earliest start date after that to the next time it should be running. And as you can see, I've got no category code on this. So these job queue entries will run with the default job queue I've set up because the default has got the job queue category filter empty. So if I run this job queue, then those job queue entries will run. And that's actually the basic functionality of the job queue. Now, we also have the job queue log entries, and this is actually a log of all the job queue entries when they have been running and what was the outcome. Was it an error? Was it no error? When uh, did it run? And, and so on. All the details you have. And as you can see, I haven't run anything yet. So let us set up a new job to get more familiar with this. So what I did, I created a code unit that I would like to schedule on a recurring basis and it has to do something. Now I've got a code unit 50,000 test log job queue, which is actually very simply going to log the date time into a new table. So it's going to log that into this table. Now the place where I would have to set up the, the code unit is obviously the job queue entry. So I create a new one. It is a code unit that I have to schedule and it's code unit 50,000. I have no parameters for this and I have no category code at this moment. Now this is a test, so maybe I would like to set up a category. And here you can see it already created it and it put it on hold. Nothing is running at this moment until I set it ready on purpose. So I can safely go to the category. I can just create a test category like these are just for the testing purposes and use that in my job queue entry. 
I would like to have the earliest time today and I want to have it recursively. I can set it up that it can only run between 8 for instance and 4 o'clock in the afternoon and when you don't do that it will run all the time and I want to run it every one minute. If I keep this zero it will run once a day and that's about it. Now I want to set this ready because I'm completely ready and at this moment it will not run. It will not run because I don't have a job queue that is either running or started or being set up for running the test category. So let me set up a new job queue that is going to run the test. And at this moment, I'm ready for my new job to run in its own category with its own job queue. And that's how easy it is to set up everything from scratch. So now it's time to actually run something. Now the first way to do that is just do it manually with the start button that I already showed you. So I've got my test job queue. It is not started and it is not set up to start from NAS. If, what, if I would have done this, I wouldn't be able to run it manually because it is, it is expecting to be run by a NAS and it's waiting for that. So let's not do that because this is a queue I want to run manually. I can start it and now you can see that it has a heartbeat, it is started and it is started as a user. And it also mentions that it started on a certain service instance. The same service instance that my user now is logged in. From this moment, I've got a new session as well. So if I go to the sessions, you'll see that there is a new background session running as my user. Now that would mean that it's running my, my new code unit. So let me check that. In the job queue entries, if I go to the log entries, you'll see that it has run once and it will run at 13.21 again. So I fast forwarded a few minutes and you'll see that I have now more log entries. In fact, for every minute I've got a log entry, which actually would mean that in my table it should have added the date time as well. So let me run my table and here you can see that I've got a record for every minute as well, which means that it actually run that code unit in a recurring matter. So if I would like to stop my testing, I can also stop this job queue in the same way I started it. Now let's set up everything by using a NAS. Now in the video, how do I set up web client, Windows client, NAS and web services on separate service tiers? I explained how to set up also a NAS on a separate service tier. Now it's always best practice to do that. First of all, you need a user to run a NAS, a specific user, which is going to log in into your companies and run your code units, access your data with that specific permission set. And uh, you can restart the NAS whenever you want without intervening with your running service tiers. So I'm going to use the same script that I used in that video to set up the NAS here. Now before I do anything, I set up my job queues to be run as a NAS. So I want to run my test job queue as a NAS. I load my commandlets from nav and now let me run my script. As you can see, I'm creating a credential for my user. And then I'm going to set up a new service instance on new parts, which is going to be the NAS tier. And I'm going to set up the NAS services startup code unit. So let me run this. It wants my password. And here you go. My NAS tier is ready. And my NAS service is set up to run code unit 450, which is the code unit to run the job queue. When you start this, 
you'll see that when the NAS is started, that it picked up the test because it was set up to be started with the NAS. And we, when we go and look at details, we'll see that it's running on a NAS tier service instance with the user Waldo, which is the service user that is running at the moment. Now to check if it's running, it's quite the same as I would have run it manually. So let us just check that. Let's go to the job queue entries. And in my case, the test code unit should be running. And as you can see, it updates the time and it, it's still adding the job queue entries, which means it's running the same as it was before. Now, this is basically what I wanted to show you regarding the job queue and how to run jobs in the job queue. I hope you enjoyed it and see you next time.